if you do not understand white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else that you do understand will confuse you. In all of these nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, anywhere on the planet, minute by minute, day by day, all of the time, all of the time. Good morning to you all, and welcome to the February the 22nd edition of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bob. We plan to have a good show today, so let's get it started out. If you'd like to be a participant in today's show with your... Um, with your calls or VGQ, all you have to do is simply dial 516-453-9921 and press the number one button, as Darnell has done in New York. I can say that because Darnell has given his name, but be sure you get the call screen of your name so that I can properly uh, introduce you and uh, we can get you on. You can also Gmail me at the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby, B O B B Y at Gmail dot com. Our priority is going to be the calls first. And if we have time then we will work in Gmails. And then lastly you can join the chat room by simply going to blogtalkradio dot com. You want to click on the programs, uh, in particular, the Produce Justice Show. And once you do that, then a little box or area, area will come up where you can join the chat and get in there and, and, and enjoy the constructive conversations that go on in the chat room. Remember, we always are looking for constructive results in on this program because the one thing that we want to avoid is confusion. So you're going to hear that term, constructive results, all throughout this program, and along with other terms that Mr. Fuller will use, such as VGQ. You will also hear, I don't know. You will hear that. You will hear the word code. There are a lot of things you will hear. So if you have a question, you know what to do with that. Please be brief with that. For your information, Mr. Fuller will be on the Carl Nelson Show this coming Thursday, Thursday, from 5 until 7 p.m. Now, I was told, or Mr. Fuller and I were told, that you can also access the show by going to our website, our website, that is producedjustice.com, and there's a little banner there which you can click on and you can get the show now, making it a little easier if I understood what was said to me this morning, to make it easier to uh, get the Carl Nelson show that you can hear Mr. Fuller uh, on this coming Thursday, the 24th of February, 2022. You can hear Mr. Fuller. I think that is radio station WOL 1450 on the AM dial, and what, Mr. Fuller, what is it on the FM, 95, what is it? 95.9, I think. Okay, 95.9 on the FM dial, you can get that, yes. But they can look at that, they can look at the website, and it's it's posted there. Okay. ProduceJustice.com. That's right. ProduceJustice.com, where you need to go. Yes, it's on there. The okay, time and there the phone number to call. Okay, there you go. All that information is right there for you to make it easier for you to hear, Mr. Fuller. And I'm looking forward to that, as I always do, to look forward to it. Okay, chat room is busy. People are calling in. That's good. So I'm going to get to you, Darnell. I'm going to get to you, Corey. I'm going to get to you. All righty. 
All righty. Let's see here. Let me say um, uh, good morning, Mr. Fuller, and how are you? Good morning. I'm still learning. You are still learning. Very good. Okay, that is an introduction to some and and presents others, Mr. Fuller. Okay, uh, as you well know, this program goes all over the globe. And to prove that, not that I have to, this lady is from the concept of Trinidad, Tobago, and she has given her name. Her name is Talisa, and she said this, uh, Mr. Fuller concept of Trinidad and Tobago. She said, thank you for all you do. She said, my question to you, Mr. Fuller, is what are your thoughts on the often emotional response that so-called black people sometimes have to white people calling them derogatory names such as the N-word or monkey? I have seen black people on social media in literal tears crying from being called names by white strangers online or, in one example, in person. Why are some black people still shocked and emotionally perturbed by these occurrences? Thank you. Talisa. Well, according to logic, it would be because that's where we're trained. You can call a cat names all day long. The cat will keep looking at that milk bowl. If there's milk in the bowl, you can stand there and call that cat all kind of names you want to. That cat will look up when they finish drinking that milk. It'll happen every time. And that cat wants more milk. Of course, if it doesn't, it'll just walk off. But if the cat thinks that it doesn't have enough milk, the cat will look at you, and you know what a cat's eyes looks like, cat's facial expressions. That cat will just look up at you, and you've been standing there for the last 15 minutes cursing that cat out for everything, talking about the cat's mother and everything. The cat doesn't care. Why? Because the cat got cat sense, that's why. And we need to think about that. Hmm. I mean, see, the, the cat is looking at something practical. I'm looking for food. I don't know what you're doing. I don't really care. But I'm looking for food. Where Where's the milk carton? You, you had it here before. I had milk, but I didn't get enough milk at this time. I need a little more milk. Now, you can stand there and talk about anything that you want to talk about. You, you, you can talk about, you know, uh, the grass growing. You can talk about what the price of wheat is in China. Uh, you can say anything you want to, and you can call me any kind of name you want to. Now, the code says, the counter-racist code, anybody should be able to call you any kind of name that they want to call you. And the only time you should get a little nervous is when they say that you're lying. Now, that's dangerous. If you're saying something, that you believe is true, and someone says that you are deliberately not telling the truth, that can be dangerous. But somebody calling you a name means absolutely nothing if you decide that it means absolutely nothing. I know I decided that years ago. And a person can call me monkey, uh, sambo, kafir, help yourself. Bring a committee around. I mean, you all can make up a song and sing it, whatever. You know, if I'm trying to sleep, I'll say, well, you're making a little too much noise. I mean, it's not the names you're calling me. You're disturbing my sleep, and I need my sleep. So could you kind of just record what you have to say, I mean, you know, and leave the recorder here and... You can hit an automatic switch or something like that when I wake up and start playing it again. But mm-hmm. it just depends on whether or not it's disturbing me as far as sound is concerned. But the actual names and the code says, like the N-word, what do you do? How do you respond? So a person says, you're the N-word, okay? 
They scream it loud over the loudspeaker in a stadium, okay, and put the spotlight on me. There he is. That's it. Tithia, Sambo, the N-word. They might have about 15 or 20 names to call me. It might take three or four hours to call me all the names they want to call. And when they finish, if I have decided, which I have done already, you haven't done anything. <laughs> that doesn't mean nothing to me. Have fun. Bring your cousins next time. <laughs> And that should be our reaction. That's just a decision that the person who is listening makes. Mm -hmm. You don't let anybody control you with words. That's the code. Mm -hmm. That's rock-solid code. You master words. Words don't master you. You practice mastering words, all words, in any language. You become the master of words. You don't let words swing you around. So name-calling is at the bottom of the list of you being concerned, except when a person says, you're a liar, and you're lying about such and such a thing, that thing that you said day before yesterday, you lied about it. Now, that's an accusation that can bring about all kinds of ramifications. But a person talking about what you look like, Mm-hmm. Or that you're a monkey or something like that, or you resemble a rhinoceros or whatever. You say, well, <laughs> have fun. That's what you think. Keep on thinking it. It's got mm-hmm. nothing to do with me and my reaction to your name calling. Mm-hmm. I want to cement that in. That's a rock solid part of the code. You can ask a person, what is it? Like a few years ago, someone. On, uh, in the newspapers in somewhere in Southeast Asia they called a person at a meeting a macaca and everybody looks around at each other and say what's a macaca well somebody looked it up they say it's a species of monkey and the person says oh <laughs> if that's what you call me hey, you know hey you know, be my guest <laughs> You know, we didn't know what it was. But now the N-word has its power because it doesn't have a definition. And I can call you by anything. If you don't believe it, try it with anybody. Call them something that they never heard before. And everybody burst out laughing. They can drive you crazy. Why? And, and if you ask, what is that you just called me? And they tell you what the word is, but they don't tell you what it means. And everybody laughs every time. They can drive you crazy doing that if you let them, if you want them, if you have have decided that you're going to be driven crazy by doing it. But that's a decision for you to make. I get back to what I said at the beginning a while ago. Cat sense when it comes to name calling. Be just like that cat. Just like the cat. Okay. Five, you can one, see those six. cat's eyes. I can see them right now. Yeah, okay, what's uh-huh. this say? <laughs> About anything, really. <laughs> I like that. They don't care. <laughs> I like that. 516-453-9921 is the contact number for today's show. And with that, we will go to New York in the house this morning, and that will be Darnell. Darnell. Good morning, and you are on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, Good morning sir. sir. Um, Mr. Fuller, the um, phrase that you wrote in the um, the code book, if you do not understand white supremacy, racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Did you coin that phrase in 1971? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you understand today about the system of white supremacy what it is and how it works that you didn't understand then, that you understand now? Well, in two words, not enough. Mm. Why? Because I set out a little after the time that I wrote that to say my objective is not to be how good I can wrestle with the system of white supremacy. 
My objective is to replace the entire system of white supremacy with, in capital letters, the system of justice. And if I fail to do that, I am failing in my objective. Like in a war, you should have an objective. What is the objective of the war? People are getting hurt in a war, and we are in a war, okay? So your ultimate objective is not just to wrestle with a problem forever and try to look around at the crowd and say, how am I doing wrestling with this problem? No. The objective should be, if it's a problem, you solve it. You solve the problem, and anything short of that is inadequate. If you're trying to build a house, the objective is to get the house built. Not to keep demonstrating how hard you're working trying to build a house. Building a house might call for hard work. But if anybody asks you, what are you actually trying to do? You say, I'm trying to finish this house that I started building 15 years ago with bits and pieces of scrap this and scrap that. And I'm trying to put it together. But I'm short of materials. It's taken me a long time. But it ain't over until it's over, until the house is built. I'm determined to do it, no matter how long it takes, if that's what you started out to do. Looking around for somebody to clap their hands, I mean, every time you nail a nail, is not the objective. So in answer to the question, end the system of white supremacy and replace it with a better system, which would be theoretically, logically speaking, the system of justice, which means guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help in every area of activity worldwide. Won't, it won't work if it's not worldwide. The system of white supremacy is worldwide. So you haven't solved the problem of racism until you solve it worldwide, not just in one island or one place here and uh, another place kind of halfway there. No. It's got to be a world system because the system of white supremacy is a world system. It ain't over until it's over. And we haven't right. even begun to make an excellent start. I can't criticize people because that's against the code. But I'm saying I haven't made an excellent start. Why? Because I can't prove that I've made an excellent start until it's over, until it's all done. Then I can say that I was right on track, not one minute before. It's not like football. You don't get paid for yardage. Hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. Darnell, and you know the rule, do not be a stranger. Mr. Fuller, uh, Mr. Jones wrote this. He said, this is from uh, the GMA, he says, um, why does it feel like black people are in a living hell when it comes to health and other parts of life? When it comes to health? No, he said, why does it feel like black people are living in, are in a living hell comes to health in other parts of life? I, I can't get that word when it comes to... The word to, is hell, living in hell. Yeah, but I, that other word, when it oh, comes health. to what? When it comes to health. Oh, health. H-E-L-P. H-E-L-A. L T H health. Oh, when it comes to health. Yeah, health. And what's the last part of that question? When it comes he said, to in health. In other parts what? of life, he says the question is, why does it feel like black people are in a living hell when it comes to health 
in other parts of life? Well, everything that we do adds up to what you call excellent health. See, in order to have excellent health, you just don't do one or two things. Health means mental health, physical health, healthy, all the way in all things. Every time you move, you don't do anything that's unhealthy. Everything is supposed to contribute to health. What is health? Like the word sounds itself, healing. Everyone needs healing because everyone has sickness, mental sickness, economic sickness, every area of activity, educational sickness, meaning you have a need. That's all health is, Uh, you know, uh, a poor health. You have a need for something that is nourishing, something that will make you strong and not weaker. And black people are that way in every area of activity, primarily because the white supremacists want it that way. That's why we have a race problem. If we were a healthy people in body and mind, there wouldn't be any problem. But the white supremacists themselves are not a healthy people. They don't believe in health, even though they claim they do. They, they like, in particular, when it comes to interaction with non-white people, they want everything to be artificial rather than beneficial. The food, artificial. The educational system. They want you to lie about things, like this is Black History Month and whatnot, whatnot like that. And they don't want you to say anything that sounds like it comes too close to the truth about the system of white supremacy. That's why... I, they have any school board meetings and all like that. Say, you can't say that. Why? Because it makes me uncomfortable. That's why. Now, that's not a reason. I mean, you can get uncomfortable taking a vaccination shot. But, you know, you can be on. Un- everybody's been in a dental chair. You can be uncomfortable by going to the dentist. You can be uncomfortable when the surgeon says that and they're going to have to remove your kidney and put in a new one that will work like clockwork. Now, it might, you know, well, uh, well, is there any way that I can repair the old one? The old, the old one's shot. I mean, your body parts, just like parts of a car, it's just worn out. But we got you a brand new one here. I mean, healthy, healthy, healthy. It'll heal it, and you'll have a functioning kidney that will outlast you. Oh, this is this is this is an excellent kidney, okay, but you're going to be somewhat in discomfort getting it, just like building that house. You might, you know, get real tired with that hammer and nail and that screwdriver and all the rest of it, mm-hmm. but in the end you'll have a house. But in the, the short answer to that question, bottom line, you're not going to have a healthy people under the system of white supremacy. It's not going to happen. Why? Because the white supremacists do not want non-white people to be healthy people in mind hmm. and body. Artificial sex, artificial food. Artificial mm. education. You go into the court systems. Artificial legal uh, legalese. Uh, you're seeking justice, and you don't get it because they're playing games with words. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. All the areas of activity artificial when it comes to non-white people. They don't want to be truthful and real about nothing. Why? Because it's healthy, that's why. Because it's healthy. Wow. All righty, let me take my break early. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. And if you would like to be a part of today's program in the form of a question, just simply dial 
516-453-9921. Be sure to press that number one button, as Corey in Milwaukee has done and David in Dayton, Ohio has done, and many other people who are online, if you'd like to make a uh, comment or a short VGQ. Be sure to give the call screener your name so that I can give you a proper introduction without messing it up. I'm notorious for that, but it's not on purpose. I'm trying to get better each show. You can also Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And that will be read when we have a moment to do that. And the chat room is open for those of you who would like to join the chat. Just simply go to blogtalkradio.com. And then you want to go to Programs, the Produce Justice Show. Click on that bad boy. And then you can enter into the chat room. And, man, you will meet constructive <laughs> Constructive Action is in there. J.J. Home Loans, Emery Lamuma is in there. Jacoby 2 Kane 2 is there. Justice Warrior. Rita, Triple H, they're still learning. And Swa, out in L.A., he's in the house. All those. And good conversation going on in there this morning. So make sure you get in there. Speaking about the Gmail, Mr. Fuller, um, Talisa wanted me to say thank you for addressing uh, her question concerning the N-word. You did speak about about that last week, and um, she was probably surprised that it was first on the list of questions to ask you this week, but she wanted to send a thank you to that. Okay, for those of you who are just tuning into the program, we're going to be making this announcement now and also in the second hour. Mr. Fuller. Read a triple A because I don't know if you were in when we made this announcement. But this coming Thursday, Thursday, the 24th of February, Mr. Fuller will be on the Carl Nelson Show in the DMV. Yes, he will be. From 5 p.m. until 7 p.m., 1450 on your dial, on your AM dial on WOL, and 95.9 on the FM dial, particularly for those who are in the district. You can pick that up there. But also, we were I was told this morning, Mr. Fuller and I were told this morning, that on the ProduceJustice.com website there is a area now that you can also link up to that and get the program without going through all whatever difficulty people were having in getting the Carl Nelson Show Personally, I have it bookmarked so that I will not miss it, but now our people have made it easier for you to listen to the Carl Nelson Show with through us by going to ProduceJustice.com. That's this Thursday. Don't be a stranger to that either. Okay, let's go to Milwaukee, phone line, Carl, or other Corey. Let me see if I can punch you up here. Okay, wait a minute, Corey. Hmm. Got you in there. Corey, are you there? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Can okay, you okay. I didn't, I didn't see my buffering thing. Good morning, Corey. What is your question for Mr. Fuller? Yes, uh, to paraphrase Mr. Fuller, uh, you recently uh, came up with a, a, a quote or a saying that um, the system of racism, white supremacy, is so hard to destroy because it produces all the things that most people enjoy. Um, so if consumerism and sex being probably two of the strongest areas where the white supremacies produce things that people have fun and glory and receive material gain from, what should non-white people be thinking and doing to get past these uh, things that are, and start producing justice? We're going to have to stop wanting to do the things that the white supremacists have set up to attract us into doing. I mean, they 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 say black people, black people are like children. They, they, they really, more than anybody on the planet, they like fun and games. Now, everybody likes fun. The white supremacists, but see, it's how you have fun. The white supremacists have fun being white supremacists. 
Now, they, they, they came up on an idea that it's the most powerful idea ever invented by people because they say, hey, I have my fun by being supreme over black people, the non-white people of this planet. That's fun to me. I wake up in the morning and go to bed at night thinking about how much fun I get out of that. I get fun, I get glory, and I get material comfort. These are things that every creature wants, every animal wants that. And the white supremacists came up with an idea for getting that by saying, I'll just tell everybody that I'm supreme, that they better do what I say, and I will produce an entire system worldwide based on that premise. Then I tell them what to do, and they don't tell me nothing except what I want them to tell me when I need some information from them. But I tell them what to do in every area of activity 24-7. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. And they better not do anything that displeases me in any of those nine areas of activity. And I'll call it white supremacy. And I will have fun doing every minute of it. And I will be grieving every time it looks like I'm losing that grip of what gives me the most fun, more than anything. That gives me the the most fun. Now, I'll train them to have fun serving me. It won't be serving them. It'll serve me. But I'll do it in such a sophisticated way most of the time. Sometimes I'll have to crack a few heads. But most of the time, I will do it in such a way that even when I'm not watching, they will be supporting me and supporting what I say and supporting the things that I do and copying the worst things that I put out there for them to copy. Being gangsters and all like that. I mean, they they pick up anything that's a bunch of garbage, I dump it on them and tell them this is the way for them to go. Anything that's tacky, trashy, terroristic among themselves, anything that's destructive among themselves, I'll have them killing each other, glamorizing killing each other, thinking that killing each other is a big deal. That way, I don't have to kill them. I'll sit somewhere eating hamburger, and, you know, and enjoying myself. And sit back and watch the killing. And then I'll run in every now and then and pretend that I'm trying to straighten it all out, but I'm really not trying to do that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I'll kill a few of them every now and then to keep in practice. But basically, I don't have to kill no black people any time because I can have them killing each other in five minutes under any circumstance, because they're mm-hmm. weak-minded, that's why. Okay. All right, Corey, thank you for your call. You know that, don't be a stranger. 516-453-9921, the number to get in contact with the show. Mr. Fuller, um, before we take the next caller, that action that you just described, or how about this, this has come up in the chat room talking about the refinement stage of white supremacy. I know that's in the book, but for those of, of that have not gotten to that, what is a brief summary of what is the refinement stage of white supremacy? The refinement stage is the finished stage of white supremacy, which they are trying to remain in that now and trying to even refine it more. Refinement means you got something started, like having a car and or building a car, and you build the engine and the transmission and all like that. That's getting the car set up. But when you finally get the finished product, you'll say, now, the car runs fine, and uh, everything is mechanically sound. It'll get you where you want to go because you always keep your mind on what the car is for. Basically, it's to get from one place to another. And 
Now you want to say that it's not just a matter of getting from one place to another. You want to do it in an economical fashion. So can you improve? Now we're talking about the refinement part. Mm -hmm. Can you improve the carburetor so that rather than use a tank of gas a month, it uses a tank of gas a year? takes a whole year for this mm. vehicle, you know, to run out of gas. Once you fill that tank, you're good for 12 months. So that's the refinement stage. They do yes, the sir. same thing with the system of white supremacy, okay? And uh, let's put a coat of paint on it. I mean, you know, it, it, it's mechanically sound, and it saves gas. I mean, it's got good tires and whatnot that will last just about forever. You know, you puncture proof. It's impossible to have a flat, okay? You know, you made a tire, then you made it, you refined it in such a way that, hey, you never have a flat with this tire. It just ain't going, it ain't going to happen. Okay, what you do? You have to tear the tire up. You just won't have a tire. But if you got that tire on now, I mean, once you fill it up, I mean, you're not going to have a flat. You just have to destroy the tire. You yes, know. sir. Mm-hmm. And so the the system of white supremacy, that's the stage that they're trying to stay in now. They have already arrived at that stage. In, in other words, where it's an automatic machine. It runs yes, on automatic. All they have to do is just come back and check it every now and then. Okay. Uh, in that refinement stage, and I'm, I'm going to get to you, David. In that refinement stage, since you used the example of uh, the automobile, just as an example, uh, and then in relation to refinement, would it be a surprise to you, and keep in mind we're talking about refinement stage, that uh, there uh, has been such an invention called a a hydro carburetor, and I think through electrolysis, that they can actually have a car run off water, H2O. But uh, from the information that I have read this week, that uh, it would not be productive for the system of white supremacy because water is the most prevalent element on this earth. Water, or maybe air, but, but, but water uh, in other words, from a financial standpoint, it wouldn't make sense. Would that be surprising to you, or would that actually make sense in terms of the refinement stage of white supremacy? The code requires me to never be surprised at anything. Okay. Except the system of white supremacy being replaced with the system of justice. Now, that should be surprising. But anything that happens that shouldn't happen or anything that in the field of technology that should happen, something beneficial, don't be surprised about anything. The rest of your existence on this planet, never, never, you know, just, just assume that anything can happen, pluses and minuses, things yes. that happen that most people would call miracles uh, 2,000 years ago. They would say, you know, all of those plane, people on an airplane going through the air and they don't have wings on their back, but they are in a... And, and you can put a ship in water and that ship weighs tons. How can anything that weighs tons float? Or somebody thought of it. That's why. I see. Okay. Doesn't seem yeah. logical, but but mm-hmm. it's heavy. Say, is a ship heavy? Say, if you put a ship on your back, see how far you can go. Okay. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's heavy, but it'll float. Okay. Why? Somebody did the math. Mm-hmm. Before I move on from that, um, when I finished there or near the end of the article, uh, it was indicated that the the uh, hydrocarbonate uh, carburetor with the use of electrolysis would not be uh, effective. That's not the word that they use. Uh, counterproductive because um, it would be too expensive 
to put that in to to make it work like that. Of course, myself, I did not believe that, but um, that's what they that's what the article had indicated. It would be too expensive to do that, even though the emissions from that would be water vapor, you know, coming out from the exhaust system. But anyway, that's uh, anyway. I, I don't know. Maybe the chatters can can check that out. David, David, Dayton, Ohio, in the Gym City. You're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question, if I can buffer it up? There you go. David, go ahead. Morning, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Uh, my question is a quick question here. For people who stand against the system of white supremacy, have the creator put different type of destructive timers in descendants of the slave master children offspring slave the slave master offspring for destroying the system of white supremacy. Uh example is like not riding a wheel. Uh, the cre- did you say did the creator do this? Uh, tell a black person not to write a will. Is that your question? Right, right. Because they have offsprings of a slave master. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Like what a destructive. The, I, I don't time. know. I don't know the reason why the creator does different. anything. Right, like different. It, everybody. I guess everybody there are a lot of people who claim that they know the Creator's mind. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not one of those people. Mm-hmm. I don't know why the Creator created anything. The Creator didn't have to create nothing. Didn't have to create me. I didn't have to be created, but I am, and I appreciate that creation. That's one of the things that. Black people uh, should always say that, hey, I didn't create myself. So if the white supremacist has got a problem with me being here, their problem is not with me. Their fight is not with me. When some white people say that black people, the only good engine, or the only good black person is a dead one. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure, that's an old saying. That's an old saying that's been around forever. It was real popular to say at one time. I mean, hey, you automatically say that. But, and black people felt like one of the earlier callers said, I mean, how we feel about stuff. Whether we're going to cry, whether we're going to demonstrate and all like that. But the creator created black people. So when the white supremacists say to me, According to the code, anything about you shouldn't even be here. Well, my response, logically speaking, because everything in counter racist science is supposed to be based on logic. Logic came with the universe. I would just tell him or her, sir, ma'am, if that's your problem with my existence, that I exist on this planet, don't accuse me of it. I didn't put myself on this planet. Now, if you got a beef, take it up with my creator, and good luck with that. Hmm. And I um, say that even to this day, here in the year 2022, any white person has got a beef with my existence. Well, you black people just shouldn't even be here on the planet. You shouldn't mm-hmm. even been. You shouldn't have been produced. I don't know where you things came from called black people, but you're in my way. I mean, there are some white people who would say that. And I say, oh, if that's the problem, you, you know, you're talking, to the, you're talking to the wrong person. You ain't got no right. business talking to me about that. You take that mm-hmm. up with the creator. <laughs> um, right. David. In uh, answer but, to your question, but, you can say the same thing. But do uh-huh. that. If there's an offspring created, and you like, oh, you know, you you see like, oh, uh, uh, um, the white supremacist is handling 
these off through springs. Sometimes it looks like mostly through a black woman. Something is 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 is, is kind of it's kind of it's kind of stra- it, okay. Like what are you okay, saying? It, the problem it's a is, lot of things. Well, let, let, let's be things clear. Wait about. a minute. We're moving too fast here. Hold oh, slow down. What do you say is the problem? Then maybe the audience and everybody can understand what's being said here. We have to have that in order not to have one thing that you don't have in a counter racist code talk confusion. Okay, it's like when what black is people. What is the problem? Say, that's, that, I think that's what it is. What, okay, what problem? it's like it's like when black people say to you, "Yeah, it ain't about black or white." And they don't what? They'll say, uh, this ain't about black or white. Well, say, say that again, because I want everybody to be clear, including myself, on what you're saying. That when white bl- people say what? No, when black people say. When black people say what? This thing, uh, you're a militant, you know. Uh, this is not Wait about Wait a minute. Slow, slow down. Slow down. Okay. Like. <laughs> okay. They, there's a lot of things they say that I'm, I'm basically in a disagreement with because we could, we could be forever, you know, um, we could be forever of, of me giving examples and explaining, you know, I mean, because we live in, uh, we're living the life of uh, oppression. The life is, is is so oppressive in this. So uh, your question is? Oh, my my question is: Do we have a self? Do we? Did the Creator put in us a destructive timing device? I don't know. Now, see, see that's the question. That's a, I mean, that's that, question. I mean, you answered the question see, see, right con- there. And counter racist science. Right, good. Uh, I'm talking about this entire program now. Mm-hmm. You ask a question and you put a question mark behind that question, and you don't move to the second question until you've taken care of the first question. That's an absolute in counter racist science, and the reason is to avoid what confusion. Confusion. Mm-hmm. See, uh, a codification is about the one thing that is absolutely deadly in black people talking about the race problem or anything associated with it, is that you can't have not one ounce of confusion because that one ounce of confusion will become a ton. Yes. And then more and more tons. Yes. And how do you avoid confusion? One question at a time and make it as clear as possible what the question is. You can't ramble through the question. You might do a little rambling like I do all through the answer, but that might kindle something, a thought that wasn't there mm-hmm. before. But in the mm-hmm. question, the question has to be concise, right to the point. Yes. So did the creator make black people in such a way that they are vulnerable to this type of thing? I don't know. Because I don't know what the creator has in mind about anything. Hmm. Okay. All righty. Um, David, uh, and maybe the chatters can help me out on this one. You mentioned the word uh, uh, programmed. Uh, I don't know if that's some Manchurian candidate stuff. Maybe the chatters know, but that's what it sounded it sounded like to me, that we have, black people have been programmed to self-destruct. I don't know if that's what it was. But anyway, David, don't be a stranger. Mr. Fuller, guess what? It's time for you to speak about that book. So go ahead, man. You, you are on. Yeah, now, the book is supposed to be a confusion eradicator because the first thing in trying to solve any kind of problem, and we say there is a race problem, is you do it through the process of eliminating all confusion. You make everything clear. That's why the code book itself says recently, most recently, in the 2016 edition, that you find out what white people want. When you talk to white people, you're not going to clear up this confusion until white people are honest 
and make it very clear about what they want, because I'm talking about solutions now. And everybody's dancing around that. Everybody's avoiding it, college professors and everything like that. What is it exactly that white people want when it comes to black people? We're sharing this planet. And what is it they don't want? And we have to be very razor sharp about it. They have to be able to enumerate in every area of activity. Every white person has to be able to stand up and say, now when it comes to money, this is what I want for white people, and this is what I want for black people. And this is what I don't want for white people, and this is what I don't want for black people and be able to say in a clear voice what it is say under the heading of economics then you move to education now this is what I want taught to everybody who's white and this is what I want taught to everybody who's black and be able to explain why all right, that's another thing, because there's four questions here. When you talk about wants, what do you want to do? What do you want me to do? Why do you want it done, both me and you? How do you plan for it to be done? And then that last question, that last question, that most powerful last question, what do you expect the constructive result to be? Constructive result. And here in 2022, this is what has got to happen in every schoolroom, in every conversation about race or any other matter. Those four questions have to be answered because it's based on what people want. If you don't know what people want, you can't make any sense out of anything. I mean, advertisers understand that. You have to know what people want. Black people are not asking white people what they want and what they don't want. They say, already, I already know. They just want to mess over me and all that. Have them say that. And don't get angry when they say it. Because if they're telling you the truth, and that's the truth. That's what you want to hear. You always want to hear the truth. They say, well, yeah, but it hurts. I say, yeah, that's why we haven't solved this problem. You talk about hurt. You're getting hurt all the time anyway. Why not get hurt by the truth for a change? Since you're getting hurt in every other way, might as well be able to accept the truth. Once you accept the truth, you can deal with it. And that's true in all science. And every problem that's ever been solved in medicine, you've got to have the truth. Say, yeah, but it makes me feel bad you tell me I got cancer. Well, how are you going to feel with the cancer? The doctor is trying to cure you of the cancer, so the doctor got to tell himself, even if you don't want to hear it, that you got cancer. And then work on curing the cancer. Because it may be some way to cure it. It may be some way to do everything that you can think about. That's why you can think about it. Otherwise, you couldn't even think about it. The fact that you can think about it means you can do something about it. And that's the law of the universe. It's been yes. proven over and over again. That's what the code is about. Helping to solve the race problem, not just picking at it like we've been doing. We've been just picking at it because we're scared to face the truth. We don't want to hear white people say what's really on their minds without getting into a cursing match. We've got to grow up. And the code book is about growing up real fast, being real efficient, and getting this thing over with. And it tells us, Yes, make suggestions about how to do it, in my opinion. Yes, you get it by going to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. I call it a code, a counter-racist code. If we do these things, 
that's in the code book, face the truth, even when it hurts, will get it done. Because anything short of getting it done is just playing a game. And there's been too much of that. Here it is, Black History Month, ad infinitum. Are we going to still be talking about Black History Month 50 years from now, 200 years from now? What is the purpose for Black History Month? To solve the race problem, that's what. If it doesn't do that, there's no point in having it at all. This is not some kind of party. This is a problem-solving thing. This is business. Hmm. You know, speaking about your book, Mr. Fuller, there's a conversation in the chat room about your book for people who want to <laughs> who people who want to uh hear the conversation, just go to blogtalkradio.com and go to the Produce Justice uh show for programs and then there's a button you can enter into the chat room and you can see some of the chats that's going on in there. And um <laughs> some some people um have indicated that they like the uh, unrevised edition of the book here. And you mentioned that there are some that, that like that first edition. You know, the 1984 that. edition. Yeah, the 1984. It's, it's at the book. website, too. I don't, I don't know why, but some people say they just like the layout. And then one person said something that I think is very thoughtful. He says, less is more. It's a thinner book, but you get more out of it, mm-hmm. and this may be true. So <laughs> you use what will work for you. That's what the book is designed to do. It works for the individual person. It may not work for you, you know, the person down the hall or the person you pass on the street, but you look at it and you say, is there anything in this book that Neely Fuller wrote that will help me to do something? that I think I need to be doing. Yes. Well, Jacoby 2K... That's, that's how the book is written. Yes. And Jacoby 2K2 had mentioned that uh, he found that the unrevised edition is easier uh, for him to read and relate to. Uh, he said for some reason, maybe because he's a little bit older. Uh, and he was responding to Triple A Rita. Actually, is Rita Triple Eight, and what she is doing to help produce justice. She's been purchasing books for all of her associates, and um, they've noticed that even the change in her. And she said that she, that she has sent a copy of that book, and many right now, as we speak, Mister Fuller, are listening to this program. And she said that that's something that I can do to produce justice. The code book, and all throughout. The chat has been stay on code so that you don't get confused. Stay I like that slogan. on code. Yes. I didn't invent yep. that slogan, but if people are saying that stay on code yes. or get on code, I like those slogans. Yeah, well, those that were was slogans, this, but yeah. I like them. <laughs> that was said this way. Well, stay, stay on code. <laughs> Outstanding. All right, well, guess what, people? We have come to the end of the first hour of the Counter Racist Code show here on Blog Talk Radio and also on ProduceJustice.com. Thank you for listening. If you have to go, man, we hope we can see you next week. But if you're going to stay, stick and stay. Don't go away because we have one more hour of the Counter Racist Code show with Mr. Neely Fuller. And I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby, so stay tuned for that. Mr. Fuller, we got about 20 seconds. Final word for the first hour? Okay, I'll take that. Stay tuned for the uh, second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Yelly Fuller, commencing in seven seconds. Alrighty, welcome to the second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co host, Mr. Bobby. To get in contact with the show, all you have to do is simply dial 516 453 9921. And be sure if you have a question or a short comment, just press the number one button and you will get in line like my man from Louisiana. Original was on there.
Stefan from Houston is in there. The dollar from New York. Oh, yeah, he got some dollar for you. Ray down in Texas is there. Good conversations in the chat room, blogtalkradio.com. Uh, go to uh, the program's part where you want to get on Produce Justice. And then there's a button for you to get in the chat, and you can get in there and give your two cents. Hey, them chatters are tough. Come on now. You can also Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And at some point in time, it will be read. Okay, if you missed the first hour, I'll tell you what, you really missed a lot. But but constructive actions items will inform you of everything that goes on, including last week's show. Thank you, constructive items, constructive action items. Okay, Regino. Man, mm, I had a poor boy the other day. <laughs> Regino, you're off with Mr. Bob and Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please, sir. Good morning, Mr. Barbie. Uh, good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. My, my question is uh, in reference to the counter-racist word guide. Um, in the index section under M, there were three words you have, music, classical, music, rap, and music, soul, which uh, it appears an error of omission in the uh, word guide to define those words. Uh, I looked through the guide and I found the definition for those three words missing. Uh, so I just question, uh, would you at this time have a definition of the uh, words that uh, are listed in the index but are not actually defined in the word guide? They are not defined. In the, in the index, but they're not in the word guide. Yes, sir. And, and what yes, are sir. they? And it says something about rap. Uh, yes, sir. It's under the M's uh, for music. There are three words you list in the index: uh, music with the with classical in parentheses, music with rap in parentheses, and music with soul in parentheses. But those words, although listed in the index, are not actually defined in the word guide. Uh, oh, I, I, I see don't... it. Yeah, I see it. Is that in my book? Uh, yeah, he, he's correct. <laughs> it's right there. On the music, you have classic, for instance, and you have uh, rap and then uh, soul. Yeah, he, he's correct on that. Yeah. Wow, that that's there. got to be corrected because that's not even supposed to be there. On the music, I'm I'm looking right now. I'm, I'm, I'm that's really baffling. Uh, hmm. In the word guide, under music, okay. Hmm. hmm. Okay, I see it. Music, classical. Music, rap. Music. No, that should not be in this book. Now that's why I said it's a poorly written book. But some somebody who I had several people working somehow. I don't know where they got that. I, I don't say anything about rap, and, and mm. none of the, nothing that I write. I didn't say anything about classical music at all. Period. Nowhere in in my writings, and I didn't say anything about soul. I don't know where that came from. That's not supposed to be there. I got to indicate that right now. I'm telling the whole world, no, that's not. It's only two types of music. Uh, uh, two two types of, uh, of sound, music and noise. I don't break it down into classical or rap or jazz. None of that. I'm saying that to the whole world right now. I'm check marking this. This is crazy. Wow. And it might be some. Now, see, uh, all I can say is somebody has been tampering with my work. Ooh, wow. That's why I'm saying 
you know, when I'm dead, it's going to be all kinds of what? Confusion. So the reader of my work, because I'm saying now, because somebody caught the, 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 the person that's calling right now, they caught something I didn't know anything about. But I'm saying for the record now, uh, uh, that's got to be corrected. And that's mm-hmm. got to be corrected uh, uh, real quick. Classical music. I got no idea what that is. Uh, rap. I mean, you can call mm-hmm. anything rap if you want to. Uh, what does the textbook for victims of white supremacy actually say by definition? It says, and even the original, uh, basically, that music is a form of sound. There's two types of sound in the universe, just two. One is music, and the other is noise. Now, how can you tell the difference, according to the code, between music and noise? Music is when you hear it, it makes you think about doing something that's going to produce a constructive result. That is music. Anywhere in the world, anytime. And noise is when you hear it. It makes you think about something that's going to produce a non-constructive result. And it doesn't make any difference what form it takes. There's two types of sound in the universe. When you hear it, what does it make you do? You're either going to do something constructive or you're going to do something non-constructive or destructive. That's it. And you don't have to put any other kind. You don't have to put jazz on it or classical or rap or soul. You just think about what am I thinking about doing when I'm hearing this, what I'm listening to? Uh, am I thinking about going out and killing somebody? And if I kill somebody, the somebody that I kill, is that going to be constructive? That's it. Mm-hmm. Music serves a constructive purpose. Noise does not. Even if you hear what is called noise but it alerts you to danger, that's music, which you ordinarily would call noise. That bell Mm -hmm. goes off right in your ear. Now, ordinarily you might say, well, that bell going off in my ear like that, that's noise. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that bell, you know, is just a bell. And it's, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate here on some mathematics, and that bell keeps ringing. That's noise. Yes. But then that same bell can go off and let you know what? That there's a fire in the building. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right? Same sound, different effect. So this, if you stop and think about it, it's just two types of sound in the universe. And the only way you can tell the difference between one and the other is what does it make you do when you hear? And that's the point that I make about music in the code book. And, okay. and who put that stuff in there about classical? Uh, see, some some edit. See, I, people were supposed to copy exactly what I wrote. Mm. I've had different people copy stuff. Mm-hmm. And so here you've got some sabotage going on. Wow. So that means you have to do some thinking, even as you and I have to go through. It means I, I have to go through everything that is written here because there's okay. a bunch of stuff I suspect that should not be in the code book. And if it doesn't sound like something that Neely Fuller would say, or if he doesn't describe it, just pass it over for the time being. This mm-hmm. is dangerous. This is dangerous. See, Thank but you, I Reggie. knew when I, I came out with these editions that mm-hmm. the white supremacists, that's why I tried to get that 1984 edition out. And, you know, I didn't, nobody knew who I was then. 
but here it is, 1984, and then I jumped to 2016. People knew, through mostly through Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, who I was. Yes. And they knew about my original book. So when I came out with this next one, you better believe the white supremacists, you know, have their agents and whatnot out doing stuff. Because mm-hmm. all um, kinds of things started showing up when I started trying to put out another book. Yes. I started noticing all kinds of things happening, but I couldn't pinpoint what it was. But okay. I say, I bet you somebody would be trying to sabotage what I wrote, because what I wrote would be the thing that everybody would be relying on. Okay. Thank you, Reginald, for uh, pointing that out. Thank you very much. And yes, man, I check, Marty. We thank them very much. And anything yeah. else that people catch, because I've caught a few other things. And see, I haven't read, reread my whole book. You know, I didn't have yeah. time. I was trying to get it out because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm getting up in age now. On um, on that line, Mr. Fuller, it, just asking because it was it's been brought up in the chat room. Is it better to get the books from the Produce Justice website as opposed to other websites that I'm not going to mention on um, this uh, broadcast? They are. Uh, they are in the chat room, but is it just better just to get all the materials from ProduceJustice.com? I really don't know because, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it, that is the focus, but if there are other sources out there, uh, and they originally supposed to have been authorized by me, uh, but uh, at one time, S1 Book store carried it and right now I think it's just one or two other bookstores I don't I'd have to check and find out Mm -hmm. Uh, I have people who know where the books go okay you know I have to put that out there once that information is given to me okay but but, under uh, your authorization but this thing that I just found out just now this is this is frightening to me because I knew that that's the way it did come at me Yes, sir. I know. I said, they, they ain't, they ain't going to give me no kind of publicity and whatnot, but they're going to sabotage what I do. And a lot mm-hmm. of people, including a lot of black people, are waiting on me to die. In fact, they check and see every day. Is he dead yeah. yet? I mean, that's yeah. going on. That, I've, been, I've been told that, that people ask, because they got a whole thing that they're going to do with Neely Fuller's material. Mm. That white supremacy thing caught on. They were trying to suppress that for years. Now they yes, got sir. everybody saying it, all right, and it's running into all this critical race theory and whatnot, and it's going to get all mixed up in that. See, so it's a whole bunch of stuff coming that will cause what? Confusion. Confusion. That's why I'm saying everybody has to use not nearly full as a criteria, use logic. Logic. Black people have been avoiding using logic. We've been taught to use our emotions. Emotions change every five minutes. <laughs> logic is universal. Mathematics is exact. There's a logical way for an airplane to fly. And there's a non-logical way to try to get an airplane to fly. You mm. always want to do the thing that is logical, the thing that's going to produce the most constructive result, and that includes Neely Fuller's book, even mm. with the errors in it. Mm. And, I, and I'm, I'm having to walk through it like looking for mines in a minefield, yep. you know, and looking for looking for a needle in a haystack full of a needles, made up oh, of needles. needles. It's a needle stack. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, again, Reginald from Louisiana, thank you very much. Let's go to, I think they said it's Stefan in Houston. See if I can get you in here. Okay, Stefan, what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Good morning. Hey, good morning to you and uh, Mr. Neely Fuller. <clears throat> it's more of a VGQ and get the feedback from my VGQ if possible. Now, crime is an issue that's going on all across this country. And crime itself does not just affect one race. It affects all races and all genders. 
So Mr. Neither Phil always talks about something that is constructive that will uh, pinpoint all areas of activity. Now, the solution that I have come up with as a former police officer and as a world tops cop, that's a history fact for you all, from the Houston Police Department, Officer of the Year. I served as a police officer. Currently, we just saw Kim Potter. She made a smile after the sentence. Now, what is the solution of all the crime that's taking place in your city and my city all across this country, regardless of the race? And what are the solutions to it? I come up with a solution to help every citizen resolve their issues, even with their communications and problems with police agencies, police officers, and it pinpoints these solutions. And you can get more information, and I can assist and do whatever it is necessary to spread this detail by detail from the website. It's strategic S C S I dot com or I can be contacted by eight three two five five eight six nine five six. The best and only constructive solution in our lifetime to remove and eliminate the problems that exist between citizens and police and get the help assistance needed to citizens when and if they are involved in a crime, in the midst of a crime, and to solve their crimes. And oh. as a question, how do y'all feel about that? What do you think about that, Mr. Neely Fuller? Well, I'll go by what the code says. That comes under VGQ. You're given constructive information, uh, I hope. And you say you have a book out or a website? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Stefan. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. I do have that website. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that's what you want to give out. And you have an opportunity to do so right now. He did. Okay. And I'll say, okay, okay, say, and I'll it, say again. it again. That's, and say I'll it say slowly. It again. Say it, let's see, people don't have pencils in their hand. I noticed that about all the radio programs and whatnot. Things just breeze through. Every, everybody wants to move so fast. I mean, no. If you're going to give people information, the average person isn't sitting poised with a pen in hand and paper available or, or some type of recording machine. So when you give out information, you repeat it. That's a part of the codification. And okay. you repeat it slowly so that people, you know, people can't write fast. Most people nowadays, when you punch stuff in and whatnot on some type of machine, they don't write at all, all right? They don't even teach writing in, in school. So <laughs> give out what you got to say. Slowly. Yeah, re- yeah repeat that again, Stephen. Yes, sir, certainly. That is strategic, S C S. I dot com and what you want to go to is click on C P double I A services. C P double I A stands for Citizens and Police Immediate Interactive Assistance anywhere in the country. Or you can call the contact number eight three two five five eight six nine five six. All righty. Thank you, Stefan, for that information. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's go to New York, and we have Dollar Bill here. Let me see if I can get you in Dollar Bill. Okay. There you are. There you go, Dollar Bill. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you today? Good morning, sir. Good. All right. Mr. Fuller, good morning. Um, okay. So I was, I was, wow, there was a lot going on today, and I'm going to the book today. Oh, before I forget, Mr. Fuller, I want to buy another book, but I want a signed copy. Can I get that? <laughs> I'm very serious. I'm just laughing because I finally got it in there. I want a signed copy. Is that possible? No, it isn't. I used to give out signed copies, but then everybody wants a signed copy. <laughs> So, All right. so according to the code, you know, uh, when everybody wants a signed copy, they just have to think about what that. I, I would have to spend full time signing copies and not do anything else. 
And another thing, basically, uh, the focus is not supposed to be on Neely Fuller. Signed copies of a book is all about the person. That's why a lot of people write books as just about themselves. Autobiographies. Everybody wants to write an autobiography. and tell it all about him or herself. The textbook for victims of white supremacy is about the victim of white supremacy. It's not about Neely Fuller. Neely Fuller is just a vehicle for doing it. One of the go-to services, I hope, uh, where we can clear up what? Confusion. But then Neely Fuller, as you found out this morning, may be spreading confusion because he's got stuff listed in his book that ain't even in the book. Mm-hmm. And and ain't shouldn't be in there. I ain't, never would I say anything about music being classical or rap or jazz. I say what I have to say in the book. And all the books are about music. Two types of sound. Music and noise. Music makes you think constructively. Noise makes you think about doing things that are non-constructive. That's the only difference. And there's not any other break. Rap, jazz, classical, blues, no. This is okay for people to do it, but I'm saying according to logic in counter-racist science, whatever you listen to that inspires you to do something constructive, that's music. Whatever you listen to that produces a non-constructive result, that's noise, for example. Mm Mm-hmm. Understand. Understand. So I, I'm going to get right into the book today. Um, I really, I, 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 okay. Um, I'm on page yes, 135. Yes, it's not about the person. Don't build anything up around a person. People are faulty. As it pointed out this morning, Neely Fuller has faults. For one thing, he's got something in his book that shouldn't be there. Yes, sir. Just flat out should not be there at all. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, on page 135 in the original version of um, your book, The United Com- uh, Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, um, on page 135, at the bottom of the page, uh, the, the, uh, the category uh, is politics, and you say that avoid visiting people at their place of residence, houses, huts, apartments, etc., except for one or more of the following purposes. Exchanges of views on ways and means of eliminating racism and white supremacy. Exchanging of views on ways and means of revealing truth and or ways and means of using truth in such a manner as to protect justice and correctness. Assistance in Yes. Produce what, what justice. Uh, promote justice, he said. Okay, promote. Assistance, okay. assistance in doing constructive labor and sexual intercourse between non-white persons. So I just wanted you to, um, why, I would just like to get some more information about that and the rest and the fact of avoid visiting people only for these reasons. And I'll, I'll stay online, Mr. Bobby. Have a good day, gentlemen. Okay. Got gotcha. you. All righty. Yes, black people should limit visitation. It's an old custom, but you don't visit people just for the purpose of visiting in the system of white supremacy. I know we've been doing it for years as, a, as something they say, well, that's what we do. But in a war, you have to make adjustments. We're in a war. So every contact that you make with any person for any reason has to be for a specific, constructive purpose. You just don't visit people just to be visited. Period. Nowhere on the planet. And those who are doing it, you should stop according to the code. And the reason why is because it's not constructive for the war effort. 
you visit when you have to in order to do something that will produce a constructive result. If you can't figure out what the constructive result is going to be, it doesn't make any difference what the constructive result is as long as it's constructive. But just visiting, just to be visiting or picking up the phone, that's a visit. Uh, uh, getting on your iPad or whatever communication device you happen to have, instrument you happen to have. Don't call anybody. And that's a hard one. We're on the phone all day long. You hear conversations a block away. People talking to each other. And you say, now, is this call absolutely necessary to produce a constructive result? Because if it isn't, we should stop doing it instantly. Just don't do it anymore until the war is over. Then we can just say, well, I thought I'd call you just to be calling you. It's keeping in touch. No, no, no. Time is precious. And we should be thinking of, according to the code, using all of the time and energy that we have to solve the problems that need to be solved. And the only communications that we should have with each other or with anybody, white people, non-white people, is to solve a problem. If you're not solving a problem, then you're not supposed to be in touch. And the problem solving must be to produce a constructive result. Otherwise, it's not a solved problem. Yes. But just what you might call hanging out, an old custom, no. That's just stop. Come to a screeching halt right this minute if you've been doing it. I don't do it. I stopped doing it years ago. You don't have anything constructive to say, then don't say it. Period. That would be true. Thank you, uh, Dollar Bill, and uh, I'll keep you on the line. Uh, let me take a little break here. You're listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co host, Mr. Bobby. To get in contact with the show in the last remaining you know, 31 minutes, just simply dial this number, 516. 516- Four five three nine nine two one. Press the number one button if you would like to have a quick comment or a uh, short question. You can do that. You can also join the chat room at blogtalkradio.com. And then you want to get into the where it says uh, programs that produce justice show, and then you click on that, and then there's space for you to go into the chat room. You can also Gmail me at the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby B O B B Y, at gmail dot com, and as the time would permit, whenever that may be, it will be read at that t- particular time, and then I will inform you uh, of that. And then, yeah, I will also Gmail you, or yeah, <laughs> Gmail you back when your uh, comment is being read. Little uh, information this Thursday. Mark this down on your calendar or in your head. February the 24th at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Mr. Nilly Fuller Jr. will be on the Carl Nelson Show. W O L 14:50 on your AM dial. 95.9. FM dial, particularly for those who are in the DMV. So you can pick it up there. But uh, we were, Mr. Fuller and I were informed this morning that you can also go to our website, which is at producejustice.com, and there is a place now that you can link up with that to Carl Nelson's show so you don't have to go through the trouble that some were going through trying to pick up the Carl Nelson show. So now we have that to make it easier on you for your listening enjoyment, enjoyment, and I can't hardly wait because I like listening to Mr. Fuller on the Carl Nelson Show as well as this one. Okay, I believe that is it for this. 
particular segment as we have 29 minutes to go, and we're going to go way out to Kansas. And here is Chris with a K. Chris, you're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Yes, sir. Uh, This is a question for Mr. Fuller. Uh, Mr. Fuller, when you were 16, 17 years old, uh, how did young black men your age back then, how did they know that they weren't supposed to be talking or looking at white females? Was that something that your parents taught you, or was that something that the white supremacists taught you? And I'll listen. The white supremacists made that very clear. They hung, they were hanging black people right and left, just for even looking like they were thinking about holding the hands of a white woman under any circumstance. Get off the sidewalk, boy, when you see that white woman coming. Get off the sidewalk. Walk in the gutter. Take your child with you in the gutter. Let them be in the gutter where the mud is. And get off that sidewalk and let that white queen walk by. And don't look back at her once you, she passes. Don't look her in the eye. Look down at your shoes. You're not worthy of looking her, looking at her, period. Negro, are you crazy? Well, if you are, that's your bad luck because you're going to get hung right now. <clears throat> on this street in front of everybody. In fact, they're going to have a picnic at noon. Bring your lunch basket, which they did. Which they did. Literally. Which they literally did that. Bring your lunch yes. basket. We're going to hang a N-word today in the public square. And we'll, yes. we want you black people to be peeping around the corner, watching it when we hang it. And, you know, we're going to take pictures of it and put it on postcards and everything, send them out to the whole world. Which they did. This is what you get when you even think about touching a white woman's hand accidentally Mm. with your black self. Don't you ever put your hands on that white woman. Don't you ever eyeball her. And like a lot of people have said, don't you try to look up on the dress when the dress is on the clothesline. We'll hang you with that clothesline. Mm. With that dress all wrapped around your neck with your black self. Are you crazy? That's the way it was. Yes, sir. Well, you had to, you got that message, I mean, by the time you were about eight years old. And if you didn't get it, you were swinging from a tree. I mean, at high noon, they wouldn't sneak and do it. They'd announce it. Negro hanging today. Everybody who can get off from work, come. Bring your sandwiches. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I have seen photographs. And, 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 and all kinds of pictures. And uh, all kinds of thousands of them that never that never were photographed on back roads and all like that. Mm-hmm. Didn't have Newspa- no audience at all. It Newspapers. happened all the time, every day. Mm-hmm. 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 Exactly. Wow. All right, Chris, I'm going to keep you there so you can listen. Mr. Fuller, going back to that... Um, question that Reginald asked from Louisiana. Uh, A gentleman wrote in, I guess it was a gentleman, but it was this. It says, good morning, Mr. uh, Mr. Bobby. Uh, Question for Mr. Fuller. Would Mr. Fuller be able to provide a correction note on the website for the individuals who have already purchased his book? I'm going to have to do that uh, in the book itself. The number, it hasn't been a large number, but I'm getting to suspect there are little bits and pieces of stuff that were sneaked into the the both the Word Guide and the 2016 edition. And uh, not 
something that's, I would say, extremely poisonous, but it's not supposed to be anything that I didn't actually say. I didn't say anything about rap. I didn't say anything about classical music. It's in the index. But like the caller said this morning, it's, it's not in the book itself. Now, that might be a minor omission, but it's not. Anything that's not supposed to be there shouldn't be there. So I'm going to have to have somebody. But in the meantime, like the host just said, Mr. Bobby, yeah, and, and, and other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to have to get on that real hard down and have somebody go through it. I'm going to have to do it because the people who were handling it before, evidently, they were letting other people, and for all I know, it might be some white people, or for all I know, it never was put in there by the people who were doing the copying, that this was sneaked in there because, see, the people who put out books, the white supremacists have a lot to do with the printing press. And so I don't know. But it sounds mm-hmm. like something that a black person would put in there mm-hmm. who was hired to do so in okay. that index. I didn't say anything about rap or soul or classical music. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Glenn... In PG County, I guess that's Prince George County, Maryland. I'm going to get to you after I read this. Mr. Fuller, this is a uh, VGQ from GG. And, you know, you've often on this program and other programs, when you and I were on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the compensatory concept show that we had, um, you always talked about uh, the importance of having a will. And, uh, Dee Dee wrote this. She said, um, a will is a legal document that instructs on the division of the assets of a deceased person, whereas a trust, a relationship of trust or a fiduciary relationship between so appointed persons. It is always good to sort these things out before it's too late. And so good to gain knowledge on it. If you'd like, I can find a book on the uh, topic of wills, trust, and estates that explains it very well. And then she gave a link uh, to this. But the name of the book is Emanuel Law Outlines, Wills, Trust, and Estates. The book, the introduction under the book should give you a solid solid grasp on that. That's in response to the difference between a will and a trust, uh, and you've often spoke the, of the importance of having both, one or both of the uh, documents. So that's information that uh, uh, persons can uh, use to um, their advantage. I guess you could put that under VGQ, but... Um, one that we all should pay attention uh, to. You have a comment on that before we move on, Mr. Fuller? No, we can move on. Uh, okay. Because, but everybody should have a will. Yes, sir. And if you don't have one, get out there. If you can do it today and get a couple of hundred dollars or something, I mean, or, or whatever, it shouldn't cost that much. There are yeah. some people who just specialize in doing it, almost like an assembly line, and get it done. Every black person, particularly, yes, sir, where they have a legal system for inheriting things, should have a will. Get it done today. Don't wait. I've known people who have said, well, i get around to it, and they didn't. They wound up very dead just a few weeks later, and it was mm-hmm. a mess. You're a talking mess. about a mess. It was a mess, monumental mess. Yes. All righty, let's go to Glenn in Prince George's County. Let me see if I can get you in there, Glenn. Prince George's County morning, in Maryland. Mr. There you go. Good morning, Mr. Bobby, and good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, sir. Um, I have a question, and I don't mean to raise confusion, but I'm trying to get you know this straight. In the word God, 
I actually did see definitions for uh, those three musical music categories, so-called music categories. On page 54, there's a definition for classical music. On page 327, there is not, it doesn't, they don't call it rap. They call it rap in parentheses, sound slash image. And they give a definition. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold, 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 hold tight. Hold, yeah. hold tight now. We're on page 54, which I just saw. Yes. Okay, uh, did you see classical music over there? I'm going to have Mr. Fuller go over that. What's the next page now? 327, it's rap, but they have in parentheses next to it, sound slash image. That's 327. 327. Wait a minute. Okay. Get here. Okay. 327. All right. And then uh, page three. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, then page 374 is a definition for soul music. 374. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fuller. Oh, well, then, oh, then everything I said prior to that about it not being in there is in there, right? I'm looking at, I'm on page Apparently. 327 right now, Mr. Fuller, and I am is this saying what, what the, yeah, rap is there. It says rap. In then, other words, the, per, the person that copied that in the index copied that correctly. Is that what you're saying? It, it looks well, like it actually, because it, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, sir. No, because. In the index, it says rap music. However, on page 327, it says rap, and then in parentheses, it has sound slash image. So right. it does not say rap music on page 327. What does it say? It says rap, in parentheses, uh, sound slash image. Then it says, uh, it also says, it says, use this word to apply to any message that is presented in words and slash or words combined with images, pictures, etc. When others use this word, ask for a detailed explanation that you can easily understand. Now, on page twenty, on page fifty-four, it does say classical music, and it says use this word to apply to any and all quote sounds end of quote that produce a constructive effect on the ways that the greater number of people, creatures, and or things think speak and or act for the greatest period of time. When others use this term, ask for a detailed explanation that you can easily understand. Okay, I'll breathe a sigh of relief now. Okay. Because Let me within explain. that within that context, yeah that 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 definitely sounds like something that I wrote. Okay. Yes. And then, uh, and then, then you wrote on soul, yeah. soul music. Well, who yeah, well, I'm accusing them, saying that, put that in, sneak, snuck that in, then I can see. Now, that's a different context from what I was thinking. Okay. But what I did, I gave new definitions to, the, you know, in order to put more flesh on the bones of the difference between uh, music and noise. Than I did okay. in the 1984 edition. So that, that's a sigh of relief on my part because that that would have been a monumental uh, thing, mistake that should not have been in the book. But within that mm-hmm. context, that sounds exactly like something I would have written. Okay, well, what I, did, one more I changed comment. the usual definitions, which is what I do all through the word guide. Mm-hmm. Like the word America. You cannot associate the word America with racism at all in the word guide. In the word guide, yes. In the word guide, you can I mean, never, ever associate the word America with racism, period. Why? Because it doesn't work, that's why, and it's not true. And I did okay. the same thing with the music thing. Okay, what was your question, Glenn? What were you getting ready to say? I had one more, one more comment very quick. I think what that prior caller may have done is he may have just looked under the term music for those 
so-called subcategories and didn't find them, and then that's where there was the confusion. I think that may have happened. So I just okay, wanted to yeah, bring that out. Yeah. The only inconsistency that's real important. I see, though, I really, I really appreciate that because you saved me some agony. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You you saved us a lot of agony and done so much for us. Um, the uh, the only inconsistency I see perhaps is with rap because it doesn't say rap music on page 327. It says rap, and then in parentheses it has sound image. So that's the yeah. only, you know, and then in the back it says rap music. So that's the only inconsistency of any, and it's a slight one. I mean, it's a minor editorial thing in my in my view. So. Well, you mean it says rap music in in the index? Yeah, yes, in the index. But, yes, but that, that's the page, correct. That's correct. But when but you the turn page, to the actual, oh. but when you turn to the actual page that says anything about rap, it gives a different a difference from the, the traditional definition. Is that what you're saying? Because I'm not looking at it. Yes. Okay. Well, that would fit. I'll have to review that myself. I'll go back and yeah. look at it. But from what you just read to me. Yes, I would have written something like that. Main thing you said, give a detailed explanation that you that a person can easily understand. Absolutely, that that is that yeah. that is required, and I did that for a reason to cause people to think about the differences yeah. in what they call traditional sound in the form of music. I kind of broke it down a little bit. I didn't know that I did that. I didn't remember that I did that, but I did that deliberately. Yeah. Well, I I I tell you what, the predominant, and thank you, uh, Glenn, very much for your uh, observation. The predominant thought, and I think the chat is for this, is the saying here: "Stay on code." Still learning too has just mentioned that. And the reason why uh, the constructive items wrote just one of those uh, distractions that are to be expected, uh, notice, when you are being constructive, something comes along to derail your efforts. So this is why apparently it is important to stay on code using logic, cause and effect, to keep, you from, keep us from being, uh, well, distracted like what's going on right now in, in the world, distractions. And that yeah. keeps us from being on code where we need to have critical uh, results on whatever we're doing. See, The yeah. key one okay. word in the entire code book is what? Thinking. Thinking. See, I mean, uh, something that the white supremacists never want a black person to do. A thinking black person is dangerous. Yes. Yes. We can talk about how we feel, but we never are supposed to say anything about what we think. That's two different things. Feelings come what you call natural. I mean, you know, you have an emotion that uh, something that, that, that the kitchen is hot. That's a feeling. Uh, the air is cold. That's a feeling. But thinking about how can I control the air? Now, that's when the white supremacist said, you're black. You're not supposed to even ask a question like that. I control air. Black people don't control nothing. <laughs> and don't even think about controlling anything. Next thing you know, you'll think about getting out from under my control, and that's serious. Yes, because it does appear that there are distractions that are out there to make us and go counter code. You know, in other words, things seem to be, can get you to be obtuse. And anything that's obtuse is not going to be straight. And then we'll get to arguing over over nothing and get off code. And then we got trouble. Wow. Mr. Fuller, we got about uh, nine minutes. I'm going to give that to you a little bit to speak about your book. Yeah, well, I'll speak about the book, and and that saved me, too, because this last call, because I was saying, does this mean that I have to scrap my book and start all over again? <laughs> I'm not going to, no, it doesn't mean that. So you can still go and get the book. <laughs> I mean, 
It's still Thank worthy. You, it would have been worthy even with that mistake. But I'm saying, like I said, the book is not like the person wanted me to autograph a copy. No. Autographing the copy means the focus is on Neely Fuller. Yeah, Neely Fuller's my man. He comes up with stuff, man. And I like hearing him talking all. I mean, this is not entertainment in the traditional sense. It's entertainment in a war sense. So that means that you don't keep your eye on Neely Fuller. You keep the eye on logic. You keep seeking logic, cause and effect. What will produce the most constructive result in everything that you do and say? That's what the book is for. What can I do that every time I make a move for the rest of my existence on this planet, it will always work for me and never against me, not ever. And you need a code for that. And that's the type of book that I tried to write, that the user of the book, the reader of the book, whatever you read, if you, when, you, when you use it, it works for you and not against you. And that means you'll be able to solve every problem of it, every individual. Because if you pro- solve, the concept is, if you solve the problem of each individual person on the planet, particularly black people, you solve the problems of all black people on the planet. And that's not just a theory. That's logical. If one individual doesn't have any problems because they know what to do and what to say under every circumstance and what not to do and what not to say, like the person that called in about writing something on his website, he's an excellent uh law enforcement officer, and he says he can tell people how to avoid whatever problems they have when it comes to law enforcement. That's important. If you know exactly what to do and it works every time, yes, you want to have what information he has that he has learned from experience as a former law enforcement officer. If he found out if you do what he says, and that's what he said, it will work. So you want something that always works. So that's what the textbook for victims of white supremacy is all about, doing things that work for you and never, ever against you, and saying things that work for you. When you say it, you know before you say it, it's going to work for you and other black people. That's what we want. That's what I wrote the book for. And you can get it by going to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. And the instructions and an overview, I think I have on the website, on the back of the book, it tells what the book is for. Mm-hmm. I mean, about tells about the author, but it doesn't say much about the author at all. It doesn't tell anything about my so-called credentials. I don't have any except what the reader of what I say after that takes with him or her to use to do what? Produce constructive results. So I I, I keep focused on what? The problem. You focus on the problem, and then you focus on solutions. The textbook for victims of white supremacy is supposed about solving the race problem through the individual person, by what they do and say every day. That's the concept. It's the one thing we don't have as a code for doing so, and that's what I tried to write. Get it by going to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. Okay, ProduceJustice.com. All righty, there's a lot going on in this world today, particular. Uh, still learning just brought up this point. Still learning too just brought up this point, and I was reading about it earlier uh, last week about the Great Reset. If you don't know about that, you might want to check that out. There was a meeting held June to, June of 2020, a global agenda. But as we've discovered on this program, even though that's going to happening or going to happen, you also have to look at it as perhaps a distraction because one thing about it, we need to stay on code. 
and all these different terms and whatever they're going to come up with, and they're shooting them out left and right, we have to remember we have, it's imperative, that we stay on code so that we don't get off code and get distracted and get all messed up because we can be dominated. Mr. Fuller, we have a bow. Let me see here. Two minutes. So I'm going to give you these last two minutes before I wrap this show up. Go ahead, Mr. Fuller. Well, someone called in, one of the first callers, if it's not the first caller, said something about the master contradiction. That's something I wrote recently. And it says, the system of white supremacy is not easy to destroy because it produces most of the things that most people enjoy. And then I added something uh, this morning to that statement that I recently made. Uh, February 8th is when I wrote that statement Uh this year. And uh, I added in parenthesis, want, W-A-N-T, that most people enjoy. Well, most things that most things that a person enjoys full feeds a want. Not might not in full feed a need, but you might want some cocaine. But you gotta think about okay, that's something that you enjoy. And the white supremacists produce plenty of it. Tons of it, most of it directed, like in the movie The Godfather, they said that was the wave of the future for controlling black people, (laughs) okay? And it works pretty well in many instances. Caused a whole lot of black people to kill each other all over the world over some white substance called cocaine and then other substances called by other names, and they get to fighting about it, but it's all poison, and none of it is constructive. It might seem like it's constructive, from what I've been told, to the person who is using it, they say they really enjoy it. And this is produced by the white supremacists. They control it all over the world. Regardless of who's producing it, you think that the people out there who are in those fields doing it, those farmers, in a place called Turkey or someplace like that, a lot of those people can be classified as non-white. But actually, they don't know anything about what they're producing except it's something that people enjoy, and they've been told to get out there and grow it and nurture it and transport it, and they get paid so that they can buy some food. Yeah. So they do it. That's what that's all about. But who is the payoff person? The usual suspects. The <laughs> yeah. white supremacists. But we got yep. to stop and think. We're going to have to give up a whole lot of things that we enjoy in order to destroy what? The system of white supremacy and replace it with a system of justice. That's it. Just as simple as that. <laughs> All righty. Well, it looks like we have come to the end of a great program. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank you to all of the callers, all of the Gmailers, everybody that listened to the program. Remember that Mr. Fuller will be on this Thursday at 5 p.m. on WOL. 1450 on your radio dial, 95.9 FM, on the Carl Nelson Show if you want to get more of that. So, again, thank you uh, for listening. Thank you for calling in. Thank you, Mr. Fuller, for all the wonderful explanations. Remember for everybody to stay on code. And, of course, with me, I'll try to do better next week. Mr. Fuller, final word in 30 seconds. ProduceJustice.com. That's it. ProduceJustice.com. Thank you, producers. Thank you, everybody, chatters. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to get a wheel.